What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of That Savage Kitchen. And today we are going to be making some braised short ribs. If you know, then you know. But this is one of the fall recipes that I want to start doing for the month of October. So if y'all want to get some fall recipes, make sure y'all check this channel out. Make sure you are subscribed and make sure you comment down below if you want some fall recipes. But yes, we are making braised short ribs. If you don't know what that is, it's ribs and they're braised. It's, it's, it's simple like that. But that's what we're going to be doing today. If y'all are ready for that, make sure y'all comment down below. Tell me that y'all are going to try this recipe. Tell me how y'all feel about the recipe. And other than that, let's get started. Yeah. As I said in the intro, we are making some braised short ribs and obviously you are going to need some short ribs. And when I tell y'all these things were not cheap, I don't care what anyone says saying, oh, this is oh, cheaper this is than steak. Probably wasn't cheap because I bought a second pack, but let's get started. First, we're gonna season our ribs with garlic salt. So I'm gonna season this just like a steak using garlic salt, black pepper and salt. And that's all you're gonna need. Trust me, don't add any more stuff. Just keep it simple and nice like that. Also, I hope y'all are watching this video instead of copying the recipe right now, because I forgot to tell y'all, y'all have to cut off the top layer first. This top layer of fat is not going to render down and it's just going to be chewy when you cook it. I know no one ain't trying to eat that because we want these to be tender. Also, make sure you remove any leftover silver skin. Next, we're going to season it <laughs> again. Uh, so make sure you watch the video before you just start doing a random recipe. And that goes for any video. So re-season it and make sure you pick up all that seasoning on the cutting board because we cannot let any of that flavor go to waste. And after you do that, we are going to get a bowl and we're going to set that aside for right now. Next, we're going to make a mirepoix, which consists of celery, onions, and carrots. First thing with carrots is make sure you clean them and always make sure you shred that top layer off because no one ain't trying to eat that. People have been at the stores holding it and touching it, and we're not trying to eat no infested carrots. Like, come on, man. After you clean and shaved your carrots, we're going to cut it up. And first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half two ways. Then we're just going to go across like this. This is going to make it easier to cook, and it's going to make it easier to chew on these little pieces. Next, grab your celery. We're we're gonna cut the ends off and we're just gonna cut up into little pieces like this same reason so it can cook evenly and there are smaller pieces so we can eat them so i didn't cut my onions right here and mix them in with these because we're going to do that separate we're going to use one full onion cut this in half just like this and we're going to make it diced so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go across and just like this have big diced pieces same for the other side y'all get the point y'all know how to cut onions hopefully if you don't then that's how next we're going to get a skillet and we're going to add a lot of olive oil olive oil has a high smoking point and that's going to be perfect for our sear so we're going to add our short ribs because we want a brown sear because when we put this in the oven we are not going to get a brown sear trust me because it's going to be in its own juices so right here we're going to cook it like this so we can get that nice sear and color on the meat y'all know when it's done when it starts to get a brown texture like this make sure you flip them occasionally it took me five minutes for each side so we're going to flip them and it should look like this look how crispy that looks i know y'all might be tempted to save one and leave some and cook it all the way but now we're going to need each piece for this short rib recipe trust me because it's going to be worth it at the end first we're going to take all of our meat out all we have is the fond and the juices so we're going to add our onions in and we're going to let that caramelize after we do that i took half of a garlic and we're just going to add that in to our onion mix so i took three tablespoons approximately of some tomato paste you really don't have to measure it out it's going to be around three tablespoons mix all that up then we're going to add our carrots and our celery mix all that up once again until everything is well coated and sitting there now we're going to add a whole box of beef broth you can use chicken broth but if you're making ribs which is beef i suggest adding the beef after we added our beef broth, I decided to add a Cabernet wine. You can use any type of red wine, but we are gonna use two third cups of some red wine. And make sure it's a cheap one. Don't get any expensive wine. After that, we're gonna add our meat back in, let it sop up, and we're gonna turn our heat up on high. When it starts to bubble, that's how you know it is almost ready. Not the food, but it is almost ready to be transferred into the oven. After that, we go and transfer it into an oven safe dish. You can honestly do this recipe in an oven safe pan, like a roast pan from start to finish. But sadly, I didn't have one, so I have to use this pan and then transfer it. But it's all good. Now we're gonna add in all of our meat. And this shows you that the meat is not gonna be dry because we have it like this. Now we're gonna add some foil on top, preheat our oven at 350 or 180 degrees celsius and we're gonna leave it in there for two and a half hours now 
Go clean up, cause I know you won't clean up. You got two hours to spare. Like clean up, make some mashed potatoes, do whatever you want, but make sure you clean up though. No one, no one likes it. No one likes dirty dishes, bro. In the meantime, I'm gonna teach you how to make these creamy, smooth, delicious mashed potatoes. But first, here's a hack that I do. You know when you cut potatoes and all the skin gets everywhere, what I like to do is get some saran wrap and look at this, easy cleanup. Only one skin got off the table and escaped, but we dealt it, noticed it, and cleaned it up right away. Now, grab your potatoes. The potatoes that I'm using are Yukon Gold potatoes. These are the best potatoes when making mashed potatoes. I highly recommend y'all use these. Cut them up until they're all almost the same size so they can cook evenly. Add cold water in with your potatoes so the interior cooks the same. And then we're gonna add some salt on top and let these cook for 10 minutes or until they are tender and soft in the middle. And you can obviously just use a fork to test that out or anything, a knife, it doesn't really matter. Now we're gonna grab our strainer and we are going to strain our potatoes. Easy so far. Now add your soft, perfectly boiled potatoes back into your pot. And we are going to add freshly minced garlic to give it more flavor. Then we're gonna get a potato masher and mash it up. If you have a potato ricer, that's even better. But this method still works just as well. Next, we're going to add half a stick of some room temperature butter. Add a little bit at a time. After you mix all that in, we're going to add two teaspoons of some sour cream. Then we're going to add a little bit of milk. You can add a little bit of milk gradually till you get it to the texture you want, which is what I did because I like mine to be super smooth with no chunks in it. So I added two third cups of milk and I know y'all are mad about the butter, but trust me, you're gonna need half a stick of butter. It's gonna make it 10 times better. Next, all you gotta do is just season it with your seasoning. So I added salt, pepper, some lemon pepper, and then I added some garlic salt. <laughs> Two hours have passed, our mashed potatoes are done, but now it is time to pull out the short ribs, pull out that lid and reveal all of that flavor. Y'all see the flavor all around the bowl? That's how you know it is gonna be good. You already know. So now we gonna get an up close shot. You already see right there, look juicy and delicious. So what I'm gonna do is the meat is so tender, so I had to be careful. Y'all see me going slow right here, but we're gonna move that aside. And all we want right here is our garlic and all that broth at the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate it from the vegetables because we don't want that right now. We want to make a little sauce for our short ribs. So we're gonna move it around, add some of that juice at the bottom. After we do that, we are gonna add that garlic and y'all see how soft it is. This is going to increase the flavor profile of our ribs, trust me, and it's gonna increase the sauce flavor. It is so soft and tender that we can press through it and make a paste and y'all see me scraping it from the bottom because it is that tender. Now, I'm gonna add me some butter and then I also added some mushrooms. I love mushrooms. I put it in almost everything I eat. So I had to make a stock broth with it. You already know, a sauce with it. So I added my sauce in and trust me, after five minutes, it is going to reduce in size and you are going to notice it and it is going to get thick just how we want it so we can top it off on our short ribs trust me this is going to be the best sauce ever do not throw it away you better make a sauce but if you don't i'm going to run to your house and i'm going to fight you i'm sorry so when i stir it you see it's starting to get a little thicker than it has before and that's what you want so we're going to turn off our heat and then we're going to add our short ribs back in so it can absorb all of that moisture in the pan now it's on the plate and we almost done. Add your mashed potatoes down for your first layer. Then we are gonna add our carrots and our celery and our onions. Then we're gonna stack our short braised ribs on top like Tetris, add that sauce on top in slow motion. You already know we have to go out in style, but there y'all go. That is how y'all make braised short ribs. Top it off with some parsley for some green color. And there you go. You have to eat it all together. You can't eat it by itself. Like grow up. I hate when people be doing that. They be eating it separate. Make sure y'all eat it together trust me it's a hundred times better that way and i'm just going to show y'all just how tender it is right there like look at that you already know now this is some real comfort food it's a perfect recipe for the fall when the temperatures are dropping because it will keep you warm and feel comfortable in your own space so thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoy this video make sure y'all check out my other videos and other than that i'm out